So I'm going to start with a couple of Python very basics that we will use a lot oh, and we should know. And I would start with variables. Um, so I make a text first, variables, variables, and give this some kind of heading and put this before and then we have, have here the variables maybe um, third so it's more distinguishable from the header above and here we have the variables and then for example the variable a and we assign the value 4 to a and if we run it nothing will happen so we have to put in print a and then we get the result on the screen here now with the variables we need to be a little bit careful because maybe we have not just one a but a couple of a's so say maybe also a2 and then this would be a1 and this would be a2 and we assign another value which is 5 um, plus 8 for example so what i've done here is not a problem if i put in here a2 we will get a result which is also correct which is fine however maybe sometimes you want to have a little bit of space between a and 2 something like a2 equals um, 4 plus 3 but this won't work as you can see we get here some kind of error message so we can't have a space in between so we think maybe no problem put in a dash and then it's fine we don't have a space but again we get an error message now here the error message is that um, Python doesn't interpret this as a dash, but as an other, another operator, in this case minus. So Python reads a minus 2. And of course we can't assign 7 to a minus 2. This doesn't make sense at all. Um, and this is where we need to be a little bit careful. If you want such a space, we need an underscore. And if you have something like this, it works. So be careful here at this stage. Also what you see is that the code is actually a little bit colorful, which is quite nice. So it's a bit greenish, it's a bit yellowish and so on. And these colors help us um, to see whether our syntax is correct and also, for example, these numbers are green, these commands are yellow, so they have a specific um, color coding. When we And when we read the code, based on this color coding, we will immediately see whether something is a command, whether something is a function, whether something is a variable, and so on. And that is quite neat. Also, as I said, it helps you a little bit in seeing whether you do, are doing the right thing. If I put in print and a underscore 2, you will see that print remains uh, white and is not going to be yellow. And this is because something is missing, missing from this command. And this is the bracket. So this command always needs a bracket. So we open this bracket. Um, and then it becomes yellow. The bracket now is red because something is missing and this is closing the bracket. Now this becomes also yellow and then everything is right. So these colors help you a little bit um, looking through your code. So operators, which would be the next thing, but basically we had operators. This is just to have this a little bit more systematic. So if you have operators, we have something like five plus four plus is an operator so we get a result here the same is true for five times and nine for example this is another operator so these are all operators here um, this is rather straightforward now a very important concept are lists up here so I put in lists lists and now unfortunately this wrong place so I just move it down with the arrows and now I have the lists here and I put in some code. So we need lists a lot in um, coding for geochemistry or cosmochemistry because they contain the values for example the concentrations of magnesium or something like this and these lists are typically um, within square brackets so this is a square bracket and then I put in the values for magnesium or so, for example, 17.86, um, 19.54, 20.11, and so on. Now this is one list within these square brackets containing uh, our values. And if I run it, I just get back this list. And of course, I can also assign an entire list to a variable. 
For example, all these are magnesium concentrations. I put in magnesium here, and then this entire list is stored in this single variable magnesium. So if I run it, of course nothing is there. This is as before. Only if I put in magnesium or print magnesium or MG in this case, I will get back my list. So I don't need necessarily the print, as you can see. If I only put in the variable, it will also display the content of this variable, which is quite helpful because I don't have to write down print all the time. Um, then, of course, I might have magnesium in one rock and magnesium in a second rock. So I have a second list with, in this case, maybe 18.3, 19.4, and 20.6. And then I have two lists here, and I of course can print out, for example, here now the second list. Um, an important thing then is also an unnested list. So, for example, I could have this list of magnesium in one rock and this list of magnesium in another rock, but I want to have this stored in one single list, in one single variable. What I can do then is I can basically have these two lists here, and I will write this a little bit different now for the moment, and I put an open bracket here, and a closing bracket here, and to make this more visible, I just put this a little bit um, further in. So this is one bracket, then there's, this is the first element of the bracket. Of course, I need a comma after this first element, and then this is the second element of this bracket, and this is then within this list, and this is call, called a nested list. And if I have then magnesium and have this entire list assigned to magnesium, and if I print this, you can see this is the list, and it's usually written in this way, so it's more concise. So first element of the list, second element of the list. So this is something I could do up here as well. Put this like that just in one line, so I have the first element of the list and a second element of the list. Um, so I'll briefly uh, write this again as two different lists. So mg1 is the first one and mg2 is the second list here. Copy this down. Now, if I want to have, for example, a single element from this list, from this mg1 list, what I can do is just put a bracket directly behind this mg1 and then tell which element I want to have here. So if I want, for example, to have 19.45, so this is 1, 2, 3, so I would think put in 2, and I should get 19.54. So let's try. The result is 20.11. So this is actually the third element. So something is off here. And it's not really off, it's just that in mathematics and also in programming, we do not start counting at 1 but at 0. This means this is element 0, element 1, element 2. And now this makes sense. Because I've put in 2 here and this is the, this element. And this is what I get. So if I want to have this one, then this is 0, 1. So I need to put in a 1 here. I run it, and I'll get 19.54. So no problem at all. So that's fine. So what about if I want to have the 19.54 from this nested list? Um, i just delete this for a second. And for this nested list, what happens if I put in, well, for this nest list, the first element is actually this entire list. So if I put in here from magnesium 0, so the first element, and execute it, I get the entire list. Because this is the this entire list is the first element of this outer list here. So if I want to have only 19.54, so now I extracted already the, this first element, and from this one I want to extract again the not again, but I want to extract the, first, just the second element, which would be 0, 1. I can put in another square bracket, a 1, run it, and now I get a 19.54. And if I want to have the same from this second element, which would be 0, 1, 
So I put in here magnesium, then one, so I get the entire second element. And from this, again, the second element, so also one. And then I have the 19.4. So what I can do now, I can also calculate with this. So I can add 19.54 to 19.4. And we get, of course, the correct result, 38.94 here. And if I want to have, for example, the average, the mean value of these two, I can put these into normal round brackets, divide this by two, and I'll get this, uh, the mean value. And that's quite neat because if, if I have a second nested list that looks exactly the same, I can use the same code here to calculate the mean value of these two elements within this nested list here. So this is lists. So there are also other types of lists. I'm just very briefly mentioning this curly bracket lists um, because you see this quite often. So here we have maybe a first element, this might be magnesium, and this magnesium has a value of maybe 20.11. And this is what we call a key value pair. So here's a key, and this key has a certain value attached to it. So this would be, well, basically look like a little bit like mg equals 20.11, a little bit so this um, mg has this value here then i might have a second one like maybe silicon this has a value of 19.23 and so on and such a list is actually called a dictionary because you have a sort of word and here we have the definition of the word so well, this word is assigned this definition or this word is assigned this value um, just mentioning this because this is a what's called a JSON format, and um, this is something um, that is very often heard or, or seen, and I'm just mentioning this as an idea. And finally, for comments, comments, and I just very quickly copy this down. If I want to comment the code, I can just put a hashtag Beneath, uh, behind this and behind the hashtag, whatever I write here. So this is this is a comment. This will only be ignored. So this is uh, again color coded, which is helpful. And if I run it, I'll get the same result as above because this here is ignored by Python. So if I would not have the hashtag here and run it, this will produce some problem because now this is considered and Python can't do anything with it, um, which is then producing this error message. But if I has to have this hashtag, run it, we will just ignore it, and this, that's it. And this is comments, and as you can see, these are quite helpful. So these are a couple of basics.